people say, how come you Indians, how come you Indians fight for this country? I mean, you've been treated so bad, you know? You disrespected and treated bad. And I said, well, there's several reasons. I said, we come from a warrior society, warrior culture. Where's the crooked horn on that one, look. The old days were tough, you know that, but we survived. This animal sustained us. The prairie were just black with bison. Yeah. These Americas, this is Indian land. Always will be Indian land, regardless of who owns it. God gave it to us. This is our land. That's, that's why we fight for this, this country. I like to paint about the history of Plains people because that's what I know best about the uh, customs and ceremonies. I'm a Cheyenne Arapaho tribal member. My mother was a National Indian Woman of the Year, and uh, my family is all artists. I joined the Marine Corps. I was sent to Vietnam to recover shot down pilots out of the jungle. After the Marine Corps, I became a police officer I worked 46 years with the OSBI, Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation. I was at Forensic Artists. I've probably done 5,000 witness description drawings. I dream a lot of things, and sometimes I'll get up, come down here, and, and start painting right away because it's fresh in my mind, and as the day goes on, it might morph a little bit, but originally it began with a dream. We're dreamers, you know, we're dreamers. I am very proud to be a Native American. Harvey and I met through law enforcement. I was an alcohol agent, uh, worked in the bars and liquor stores uh, for a living. I was an undercover agent with them. I am there for Harvey. I want Harvey's vision for the memorial to be what Harvey wants it to be. When the Smithsonian sent a crew around asking what uh, veterans wanted, I dreamed about it and I got up one morning and I went down there to my table. I took out a tablet and I just made some sketches. Gina came by and she looked at it and she said, what are you doing? I, sort of, I said, well, I'm thinking about an idea about submitting something for this. And I knew instantly when I saw it, there was something very special about it. I could just tell. I just knew it was it. Mm. Good work. Good work. Mm. Since I'm a kind of a traditional guy, you know, I, I thought, well, what do we have in common? 573 federally recognized tribes. And I said, well, we have our ceremonies. It took me two years to become a giant chief through ceremonies. Mm. Back in the old days, they said, kill the Indian, save the man. That was the government policy. So Indians all went into hiding with their ceremonies. The Cheyennes and Arapahoes never gave up those things, never gave up those old ceremonies. Native people believe that everything is connected on this earth. We're all connected to the environment and, and being in harmony with nature. Everything involves a circle. And I said, you know, so circles are gonna be important in the memorial. Nathan, I love your little bear, little guardian. My son Nathan came over one day and he's an artist, inventor. It's a reminder that uh, you taught me how to carve. <laughs> my first impression of my dad's sketch of the memorial, I didn't hesitate. I said, Dad, that is a phenomenal design. Let's take this to an architectural firm and create a 3D rendering for the competition. This is my design. It's based on circles. And you go inside of the inner circle is a vat of water. Almost all nations have sacred water. And then inside is that, is that sacred fire. It's inside a drum. All nations have sacred fires. And that's what I kind of call this warrior sacred circle and the sacred fire. I've got uh, lances there with four eagle feathers on them. And on those lances, you'll see some circles again. That's where you can tie your prayer cloth for your fellow veterans. One of the things I thought that would be important that uh, should be added was the element of 
the prayer cloths. Each prayer cloth is a prayer for someone that's called and asked us to pray for them. And every time the wind blows, that prayer goes out. One morning, they called me up and they said, uh, Harvey, I got some good news and some bad news. He said, what do you want first? I said, well, give me the good news. He said, the good news is, he said, you won. You're the winner. He said, we accepted your, your design. The bad news is now you got to do it. Hi, Harvey. Hi. Hi, Rebecca. How are you? How are you? Things are going well. The construction is moving along well on the site. And I you know we're really excited to see the progress. Yeah, they're moving along. Mm-hmm. We're doing a mock-up on the ring here in Oklahoma City and working on the molds for the battle streamers and for the feathers mm -hmm. and for the uh, lance points. They're, they're looking really, really good. Just to watch it grow and develop is just uh, amazing. We had to oversee everything, you know? They have put us through the mill with questions and guidelines. Hey, what we're doing here today, guys, we're getting the battle ribbon for Harvey and uh, to go on the lance. And I know there's going to be a separation somewhere. We're not sure yet until we get it off in wax to make. Would it be OK if we go ahead and measure the overall length? Sure. So I think we're hovering around the 42 to 43 area. Right. And then if we take an inch off. We're going to be taking down yeah. some. We're going to take about an inch off these points here. Yeah, you're at 42-ish. And it's frustrating sometimes because, I say, well, right now we're, we're talking about an inch. Yeah and this will be touching the lance somewhere. So you're looking just for a lot yeah. of attachment points? Probably yeah. one or two per feather. Yeah. There's our design team. is myself, Gina, and Nathan, and the Bootsers. You were saying that you're looking for a little Hans and Tori Bootsers. We told them what we wanted to do, and they said, we're in this fight with you. Are you going to take a piece of wax to look like it's being tied on? Yes. yes. They're really okay. meticulous, but I'm glad they're that way. Feathers, that there is... To build a memorial on the National Mall, of Washington, D.C. is a very complicated process. How do we take the idea of the drum, the water, and the warrior circle, use that to build a place that draws people in and helps them connect with this whole idea of sacrifice? A democracy to me is everyone counts. And this memorial is about that exactly, and it's about saying thank you to the Native American veterans who we've done a bad job saying thank you to before. They told me that uh, this was the last national memorial on the mall. There's no other place to put one. And we're the only ones that put a sound system in it. They thought, well, that's pretty cool. And I said, well, I want, you, I want you to hear them sing them war songs, sing that veteran song, you know? Every tribe has their veteran song. This is a unifying memorial. That makes me proud that my dad has conceived a memorial that will galvanize our country in, in a difficult time. I look forward to the day that we can go to Washington uh, when the memorial's finished and just sit back and watch the people come in. It's for healing. It's a place of peace. Every nation, 573 nations go there and they do a ceremony, that's going to become a powerful place.